Alright, we're going to be watching Noma Heho, who's going to be playing Zarya on Route 66. This is Platinum 3 on PC. I thought I was winning this game until I just wasn't. I tried to apply the ball mentality that I've heard in uh, one of my other videos, which is ignore the ball and fight the back line, and I thought I was doing at least an okay job at it. I explicitly remembered feeling, wait, we're losing? When I noticed how little time we had left to push through. Overall, it felt like it was really hard to actually finish kills. Side note, how are they getting over health when it was our turn to attack? Okay, so a few things. Uh, number one, something I already mentioned is that uh, Ball can redistribute his shields to teammates. It's like a, a recent change they made like uh, a season or two ago. So that's like how the, the health is being distributed. That's number one. Number two is I actually definitely do see the fact that you are not targeting the ball. So I would say that is a, a very strong improvement from your past games. And you can see that it pays off, right? You're getting kills like plenty of times when you are not focusing the ball. In fact, I would say basically every single time you decide not to focus the ball, you get a kill as long as you have energy. The only time you don't get kills is when you don't have energy, which is a separate problem we're going to cover. So I think overall, I think there's a lot of good stuff here, and I think your Zarya play already looks stronger than the last time I saw it. The two things we're going to focus on in this one are grabs and bubble usage, okay? Because those are really like the two big, the biggest things that are letting you down. So for context for everyone else, this is a game where they have a pretty good defense, they end up holding them on second point, right, so they don't, they don't manage to cap second, and on offense they get completely stalled out and they can't capture first. So we're going to go through, hey look, why can't you get anything done, and in particular, like, how your play specifically is, like, kind of able, would be able to make up for it if you weren't making, like, mistakes in that regard. So let's watch it through. So for starters, you're right-clicking a lot to try to get the charge, excellent. I don't actually know the lineup. I don't think it matters that much. Like memorizing this lineup is like totally meaningless. Like yeah, we get a few extra percentage of all the charge. We're like who cares? But yeah, right click regularly. Um, did you actually have? So I would just left click here. Left clicking does double the DPS of right clicks. So even with zero energy, right? It does it does double no matter what energy level you're at? I would just beam here for the old charge. But yep. Ignore the ball, like, yeah, because like, like ultimately, like, what are you going to do, right? Like, no matter what the ball does, unless something crazy happens, like one of your teammates is AFK, there's basically no way that you can do anything against the ball. I agree turning around for the Sombra, but I can hear the Sombra's on high ground, so I would just look and be like, look, I, unless I see like my teammates dropping right now and seems to be super low, we're probably fine. So I would just keep focusing on right-clicking, right? See, like, this this is all wasted time right now, where, you know, you're right-clicking, and like, you're, you're going to land shots, like, you're very clearly going to land a right-click very soon, and then you turn back for like way too long, right? One, two, three four, five, like it's it's five whole seconds before you come back. And why does this matter? So when you hit hit right clicks, right, how much does it do? Like, I don't know, 2% or so? Let's see, let's see. Like, oh, at zero energy, obviously you get more at, at higher charge. Yeah, so that, that gave you like, probably like a percent and a half or so. So in that period of time, you could be building five, six percent more towards your next ulti. And especially when you're heading towards higher ranks, how fast you farm grab is a huge differentiator into how strong you are at Zarya. I remember playing Zarya um, back in earlier seasons, uh, where you know I, I think that at any rate, like, it, it, that doesn't matter. But I remember playing Zarya back in the earlier seasons, right, and doing Zarya mirror matchups in some situations. And I remember there was one particular game where I was stunned because the enemy Zarya popped grab when I was only at like sixty percent, and neither one of us had died. Right? And like no fight had been lost either. Like literally, we were just like, you know, doing a normal poke, blah, 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 blah. And she popped ulti and she was like 40% ahead of me. And I remember going back and I watched the replay. And I'm like, hey, what's going on here? She was just way better at right clicking to me. Not necessarily that she's more accurate. Her uptime was excellent. Like every moment she could, she was right clicking constantly. Like, obviously, she was beaming if someone was in range. But like every moment she could, she was right clicking. But I would take times where like, you know, I take a break a little bit and, you know, like I scratch my nose or whatever. I look back at her back line. But she's constantly hammering my team with the right clicks over and over again. High energy, low energy. Because that's something I didn't do before. It's like, what if she was low energy? I didn't right click as much not I'm saying, like, I obviously would if I had nothing else to do but I wasn't prioritizing it in the way that she was and that was a big factor in why I ultimately lost that game was that she just got so many more grabs than I did because by the time I had my grab and used it she was like 70% to her next grab and so it was like really really hard to, to compete against having more ultimate so getting the ultimate sooner is a big part about playing Zarya right because you don't offer a lot of other utility in that regard you can't really control and hold space in the same way as a lot of other heroes and you need a high energy to do anything so you really need to maximize all the other aspects of her game in order to get very, very strong here. So this is a good example, right? So right now, you have 27 ammo. 27 ammo is two right clicks because your last right click doesn't require how, it, even whether you are at one or at 25, it's just going to consume all the remaining, remaining ammo. So this is two right clicks that you're missing right now that you could be using. So you definitely want to be getting the right clicks in, A. 
B, this is also a moment in time where you can be aggressive. So you have two bubbles here, so you can be pretty aggressive here. Even a May wall off is not gonna kill you at this moment in time if you have two bubbles. One bubble, you can die. Two bubbles, very difficult that May would kill you unless there's a really high damage dealer like a like a like a bastion, or the tank has some other way of preventing you from escaping. So I think it's reasonable right now, like even if you want to walk forward a little bit and try to like start beaming her down, because beaming is more consistent, right? You're gonna be doing 95 DPS versus like you know 50 DPS with a right click or whatever it ends up being. So, you know, you can beam her down even at zero energy and start forcing them to shoot at you. Because if they don't shoot at you, you're not ever going to be able to get any energy. It's really hard to, like, bubble anybody else in the scenario to get energy, and it's not consistent. But if you're just aggressive, they eventually need to deal with you, right? But if you want to play defensive and you don't feel comfortable walking forwards, that's fine. I'm just noting is that regardless, you still need to burn it through the rest of your game, okay? So just, you need to be aggressive in that sense, right? So if you walk forward right now, I think you understand, look, you're, you're, you're walked up here, you, you could be a little aggressive here, but again, no, hey, May Wall's gonna come up, so I just need to make sure I have two balls for it. So you back up here. I, I, I would have bubbled here, so you get all the way down to 500, 400 right now. Like, this is actually pretty spooky. You could die very quickly here to like a, a May Icicle Headshot, for example, right? May Headshot does, right, it's, is it still, it's still 150, right? So that's gonna do, what, like, you know, 185-ish damage to you? Like, you, you could die fairly quickly here if the Sombra's hitting some shots. Like, at 225, one more right, one more right click that may nearly kills you. So, I definitely would have popped bubble. Like, it feels like you're trying to get a bubble worth of energy here, so, like, just pop it. Like, you're definitely getting focused right now, because they kind of have to, because you're walking up here, stalling the cart. So, not bubble here, I think it was a mistake. So, now, you're late to the party. Alright? This is a good example of, like, locking the barn after the horses have already left. So, there's no reason to believe that they're going to shoot you aggressively now. You're low, but you're further back. Versus, I mean, look at it from the mace perspective, okay? If the mace standing over here, she's you do not feel like an imminent threat. Like, you know, she's gonna be right clicking you pretty casually. Maybe she hits high school, maybe she doesn't, right? But imagine that you're right here. The mace is 100% gonna be attacking you. She's not thinking, oh, I better not give the Zarya a charge. She's like, this Zarya might kill me, so I need to shoot the Zarya. So the proximity that you are to them, right, and how, how much energy you are, how dangerous you are to them, will determine what they end up doing. A big part of Zarya is predicting when the enemy team will or will not attack you. At this range, unlikely anyone is going to attack you. The only person to shoot you here is the Mei, who does very little DPS, right? Mei is one of the lowest damage heroes in the game. So she's not going to be able to appreciably burst her bubble. Versus previously, when you stepped up, you recognized right away that there are two targets shooting at you right now, right? So right here, right, even arguably the, the Kiriko as well, right, plus the damage boost, this is a scenario where you could have gotten a lot of energy, probably a full bubble right away, and not taking all that damage. But now you're like, oh, hey, wait, I probably should pop a bubble. Now it's too late. Now it's just the May, and she's unlikely to do any, like, significant damage to you, right? So old, old bubble gives a uh, maximum energy is 40. I think it's, I think it's now it's like 45. It got buffed recently. So regardless, I mean, just looking at it from the baseline of 40, this is a really bad bubble. Getting 17 energy on a bubble is extremely bad. So I, I think, right, I mean, let, let's, let's think about it as, as 45, right? I don't know for sure that it's that, it's that number, but I think 45 is, is max charge. So at 45, I would say that if you are 35, I think you're 35 to 45, I think this is, this, this is good, right? This is what you're looking for out of a bubble. I think if you are the 25 to 35, I think this is okay. I'm like, you know, I would have liked more, but like this is fine. Like this is a playable situation. If I'm at 15, let me switch color now. If I'm at 15 to 25, I probably have made a mistake, right? This is this is probably not not going so well, and this is going to impact my ability to influence the fight. If I'm less than 15, I'm just straight throwing at this point in time. Right? So it, at that point, like getting so little energy is gonna dramatically impact your ability to do something else. So a big part of Zarya is maximizing the energy that we're going to get them from bubbles. We maximize energy from bubbles by being dangerous, not just bubbling when they're gonna, when like we think they might shoot us, by being aggressive at them to force them to shoot us. Because, and this is a, this is a huge part of like I think metal rank mentality around Zarya, right? People, you know, some people are like, oh, like you know, they just Zarya all the time no matter what, because they're like, I don't know. I don't know what the energy does or whatever it ends up being. But usually if you're at Platinum, you already understand how the mechanics work. And you're like, hey, look, let's not feed the Zarya. But I guarantee you, if the Zarya just simply walks forward into your face, you will shoot her. Because no one wants the tank to be this close to them at full health. They're going to try to damage you in that scenario. I'm not saying that you should walk that close, right? At this point. But I'm just noting that nobody wants you to be that close to them. It will be spooky. A great way to get charged to Zarya is to simply run at the enemy backline. 
And as long as you don't overextend, you're gonna get charged. And a, a big part of Zarya, just like playing Winston or other heroes, is understanding how far can I go where I can still live versus when I will die. And playing as close to that line is the right call, okay? As tank, pretty much all tanks play exactly the same way. You want to push the limits of what you can do as much as you possibly can. You wanna get as close to dying as you can by being extremely aggressive. Not making bad choices. I don't want to take 500 damage and do 10 damage, okay? But by doing your job, by being aggressive. Because if you're taking damage, it means your teammates aren't taking damage, which is to reduce the opportunities for your team to die. When you think about it playing a DPS, okay? I mean, you play Tracer, but like you play like a standard, you know, frontline, backline DPS, not a flanker. You're used to games where you feel totally steamrolled by the enemy tank. And it's because the enemy tank is always in your face all the time and never dies. Right? That's what it's like when the tank is carrying a game where you're like, I don't even understand. I have no space. The tank is in my face all the time, pushing me out, forcing my cooldowns, making me out of position. That's the idea here on Zarya. It's like, if you can get away with it, be aggressive, right? Especially with double bubble, be aggressive. So note here, right? We, we just, we always want to finish every single mag whenever possible. If we're not in danger, we want to finish the mag. So our 51 ammo here. So what's the idea? Beam, right? Just keep beaming. So I can beam here. I can even go to the left. Because at this point in time, this area is now too wide to get walled off. If you're standing here, if you're standing here, right, this wall can be basically complete and you're screwed. But if you're playing, oh, I didn't even know I could go backwards that far. Um, if you're playing over, over here, how can she wall you off, right? She could wall this off, which is fine. You can safely retreat this way or around this. She could wall you off, right, this way, but obviously you just walk back in. So. Once, once the opening widens, this is a really important tip in general for playing against Bay, by the way, you should always understand behind you what is or is not a dangerous position to get walled off. So right here, for example, another scenario is that you can get walled this year. If you don't have double bubble, you will not be able to get back to this spot safely and you could potentially die as a, as a note, right? But there's lots of ways that you can play things out. So where, like, for example, if I stand over here, there's no way that she can wall me to prevent me from getting around the bubble, around the wall because of how the dimensions of the wall. So that's like something you just learn from dying to May over and over again as a brawl tank, and you will die to May if you play Zarya, right? There's like a May has a lot of tools to, to, to like make your life really miserable, Zarya, especially if you don't have energy. By the way, if you do have energy, you get walled off in emergency, turn around and break the wall pillars yourself. Because they only have 250 health, and Zarya at 100 energy does what 195 will break it in a little over a second just by your own, just, just on your own. Anyway. So back to we want to finish out all the ammo. Okay, so if there's a target within range, we want to be beaming them. So we want to beam them all the way down as close as we can to one and then finish with a right click and then walk away, assuming we can safely do so. But I think we can look at the situation and think, you're not actually in any, any particular danger, okay? The enemy tank doesn't seem to be anywhere close to you, right? Um, the other DPS is a Sombra who does very little damage. May does very little damage. Even if you got walled here with one bubble, you almost assuredly don't die. The two supports here are a Mercy who obviously does zero damage, right? She's a, she's a multiplier, but a multiplier of two low damage heroes is not relevant. And a Kiriko who also does very little damage unless she hits multiple headshots, which is unlikely, especially with Carl in the way. If there's like a, a Baptiste or a Zen here, you have to play differently. But this lineup here, all four of these heroes do so little damage to you. Like if you're playing Winston here, I'm not saying you have to play Winston, I'm just noting that like, if you're playing Winston here, like you just can't die. Even if they even if they froze me, I could not die here. Like literally as Winston, if I jumped in here and they immediately mailed me, I just look at the ground, just wait it out and then just walk away. <laughs> I'm totally good. It, it, you wouldn't even get close to dying. Anyway, beam out the rest of the ammo, finish right click, right? You got eight ammo right now, so again, Get you should get good. Remember, eight doesn't mean close, right? If you if you got zero ammo here, does that mean you did a good job? No, because you'll probably be at twenty five. You want to get all the way, do more beam, right? You can swing wide here, keep damaging, and then right click. Again, you have basically full health right now. There's very little pressure on you at this moment in time. Keep damaging. See right now. I actually had no idea this was gonna happen, but this is a good example, right? What happens right now? The ball is gonna engage, and he's gonna knock your bap out of position. So notice, where, what are you doing right now? You are stepping out of the fight because you are, you've used up all your ammo and, and, and I think you're reloaded early. I think you reloaded early, right? You reloaded early and you're not applying pressure to the front line, which means now the BAP is knocked out of position and what's gonna happen? They're all gonna focus the BAP. That's obviously bad, right? This is a very strong, I, don't, I can't remember if your BAP actually dies here, but obviously if you look at this, it looks like your BAP is going to die right now. Well, the problem here, is look at all the health that you have. And remember that you still have a bubble charge. 
You don't want your teammates to take pressure when you could take the pressure for them. A huge part about playing tank is understanding whenever they're shooting at you, they're not shooting at your team. That's how your team avoids dying. Tank players complain all the time. My supports are dying. My DPS are dying. I have three deaths all game. How can I carry better? And I look at it like, you're just not aggressive enough, right? Especially when people like play like Sigma and they're playing really far back and obviously their team's dying because they get jumped or flanked or whatever and Sigma's just chilling there and they ignore the Sigma to the end. That's why you don't die. You need to be aggressive because every moment you are not being aggressive is a moment they're going to be aggressive on your backline. And you can't protect your backline. Bubble is a really bad tool to save your backline. You could do it once, maybe, and it's unlikely to get you a lot of energy, and it means that your focus is taken away from the front line, which means they roll over you. So, all in all, this is this is this is like bad. I don't, I can't remember to get punished for this, but uh, yeah, that's actually okay. But you notice that like lamp gets forced here, right? So we just we have like 25 second cooldown gets forced because you're not being aggressive. If you were over here, they're all behind the cart, right? And then the bat only gets knocked by the ball, and he's probably totally fine. All right, so now, how do we feel? I feel like we are too far, right? We are really far around the corner because everything in Overwatch, especially for tanks, revolves around corners. This is the corner right here. So where can we safely play? We can play safely play somewhere here. If they do a lot of damage, we can only safely play here, okay? This side of the box. Playing too far out means we're too far from cover. But if they low damage, we can play farther out. You are way too far away. From, from cover, right? We can see this, like you're way too far away and you're chasing really hard here, but for what? What do we see here that we're like, hey, this is gonna be a big play. Like for example, you think, oh, there's two people that are low, I can kill them myself, fine, right? You take a risk and so be it. But this is a terrible risk. You have a full health Kiriko, who I think still has all of her cooldowns, yeah, really, really far away from you and you have no energy. And you have a basically full health ball and you have a Mercy who's basically full health and you're not even looking at her. What's your plan here? Right? You, this is, this is not a good plan. <laughs> like, if your perspective was, look, we're in the poke phase, I'm supposed to be ult farming, why are you pushing in hard like this? You're like trying to get a kill, but there's no kill opportunity here. And if you think there's a kill, obviously, it's your peer, especially in replay, there's not a kill. No one's low here, and you don't have any energy, so there's no, no way that this is going to work out well. I think you actually die here. So, also, like, it, while you're here, Assuming you realize, hey, look, this is a mistake. I need to go back. You should turn around and immediately climb the cart and get, get away. And I'm almost assured, almost assuredly, you would actually survive right now if you turned around right now and bubbled and jumped over the cart. And you're good. But let's say that the right call was not to go back, which it is. But let's say the right call is not to go back, and there actually is. Like, let's imagine the Kiriko. Let's imagine that three of your teammates are dead, all five of them are alive, and the Kiriko's at half health. In which case, the only right call is to try to kill the Kiriko because like nothing else is going to happen here. So let's imagine that, hey, look, we're trying to kill the Kiriko right now. We should try to kill her, right? That's like why you're here. You chose to be here. You have 26 ammo left. Keep trying to kill her, right? Beam down until you get, until you, until you get low and then right click, right? And then commit to it. Now, hypothetically, let's say, hey, you realize you've made a mistake and you're too far. You should try to get away. Well, then now you should turn and be like, okay, just turn around right away, right? Don't stare at her and reload. Just turn around right away and get away. But you see, like, you're... You're not doing either one. Like you're neither trying to get the kill nor are you trying to back up. So all of this is wasted time and a very, very important moment for you, right? And now you realize, oh shoot, I'm actually in trouble here, right? Now you're trying to kill the May, but like you have one bubble here and you're not an LOS of your support. So you have to come all the way over here, right? Like this is a, such a scary moment and you can see how you're baiting your supports forwards. Your supports, I guarantee you, I don't know if you play support, your Baptiste does not want to be over here, right? Especially having just got bumped out of the way and having no lamp. Your Baptiste wants to chill over here and play safe. From Baptiste's perspective, he's probably like, what is my Zarya doing, right? And he's looking, he's like, wait, w w why are you on the other side of the wall? Like the bat's like very confused as to like what you're doing over here. And you see the bat has to come all the way over and your whole team comes over to try to help you out, which means now the ball gets a good three man slam, right? This is a big slam. It's because of you, because you're pulling your team out of position because they're trying to play on you, but you're not in position. And now you force Suzu as well. But like, you don't want Suzu to be used right now because you shouldn't be in danger of dying. The other team hasn't done anything. You forced yourself into this situation and now you're like triggering a whole like cascading series of mistakes. All right, Blocks Wars, you're 100% backup right now. Now you have no bubbles, okay? Everything is based upon how much energy do I have, 
right? And how many bubbles do I have? Obviously, number of teammates alive as well. But like, generally speaking, we're, we care about how much energy we have and how many, how many bubbles we have. The more energy we have, the more aggressive we can be. Well, that's actually kind of tricky, right? The, the more energy we have, the more potential for plays that we can access. Okay? There are times where I can win a fight and kill somebody, which will make me safe. Or I can do a lot of damage and prevent people from trying to kill me. The number of bubbles determines how far forward we can step. If we play very slowly, very passively, we'll never need to use our bubbles because we'll never be in danger of dying, but we'll give up too much space and we'll not get any energy. So we need to figure out, okay, if we're too aggressive, we'll blow through all the bubbles and we'll die. Trying to figure out what's that mix is important. But my read here is you are way too aggressive right now for having not a lot of energy and no bubbles and being relatively far from the corner. Your team does not need you to try to push up and kill this mate right now. Ball goes, he slams. So I'm looking right here. I think it's a good hold, right? You're looking like, hey, does anybody really need it? If not, don't bother. Yeah, good, right? So ball dies. So no, you did not get punished for that very, very aggressive move that you went on the, on the Kiriko and then, then on the May. A big part of this is because the enemy team doesn't do any damage, right? If the Sombra was a Cassidy, you'd be dead by now. <laughs> because Cassidy does so much more damage than Sombra does. So, and this is what's really hard about playing Overwatch, especially as a tank, is game to game will feel so different, right? Because even at the same skill level, the hero composition, their team and your team, makes a big difference. For example, Baptiste and Kiriko are great at keeping you alive. That's a very strong defensive lineup to keep you alive as a brawl hero. But imagine if you're playing with like Iyari and Lucio, that's a really poor lineup of keeping you alive from a healing perspective at least. Lucio could speed you out, but you're not gonna get a lot of healing, generally speaking, with that with that lineup, right? Uh, there is actually another example, because she, she, her burst healing is good. But like Mercy, right? Mercy Lucio obviously is a terrible combination, right? Mercy Zen, one of the worst combinations for a tank, because you're gonna get very little actual healing in that situation, right? And then probably die here. But again, if they play different heroes, higher damage heroes, or their aim is better, then you just get fried here, and you never get a chance. So we're gonna walk forward right now, and you're gonna see and hear the Mercy Res. There's no way you can not see this, right? The Mercy Res in here. So you're gonna go after the Kiriko. Is it the right call to go after the Kiriko? Well, let's think about what information that you have. The Kiriko has not used Susu. That's a key thing, and you know this, because you've been fighting her nonstop for the last like 10 plus seconds. You know she does. She still has Susu, which means as long as she has Susu, she cannot die. Now you can force Susu. That's a possibility, right? Which would be good, obviously. Forcing cooldowns is better than not forcing cooldowns, but it tells me that she's not gonna imminently die here, which means I'm not gonna get a major advantage here. At best, I'll get a minor advantage from forcing Susan. However, I do have the Mercy resin right here. That's another option. But the Mercy's at full health. Should I zap her? I would say yes. Why? Number one, the Mercy is an easier target. She is a, a wider, larger target than Kirigo, right, who's a very thin target. Number one. Number two, she's closer to you. And number three, she's resing, which makes her basically stationary. So you're effectively going to do full DPS with your beam, right? So, you know, 95 plus 21, you're going to do about, 100, about 110 damage a second. Okay? So you're going to do about 110 DPS to the Mercy. That's not going to be enough to kill her from full. She has 250 health, right? Your she res probably takes like a second and a half. She's going to be able to live here, even if she doesn't get healing. And she probably will get some healing at some point in time. But the thing is, it's not just you that could damage her. Right? There is a good chance with the location of this res that your teammates would shoot her as well. Conversely, there is a very low chance that your teammates are going to shoot the Kiriko because she's far away, relatively speaking. She's behind the cart, which I would know based on my positioning. And there's a mercy resing, which people generally try to focus. So the correct call here is not to try to finish off the Kiriko, who you know has Suzu. If you knew she didn't have Suzu and you knew she didn't have Swift Step, I can understand. Right? Try to commit and get the kill. But with the mercy here, I would just focus the mercy down. But nobody in your team does it, which is okay. Because a big part of this is we teach you better habits. They don't always work out the right way, but the better, higher percentage play here was to target the Mercy. Now let's think for a second. We've seen Suzu get used, okay? So we know the, the Kiriko's gonna have 100-ish 100, 100 health. We also know Kiriko's a relatively hard target to hit, and we also see that there's a Mei here. And we have not seen Wei use wall recently. I think the wall cooldown's coming back up, yeah. We have not seen the Mei use wall recently. Does this seem like the right time to push? No, for all so many reasons. Even if you take out the May, let's imagine the May is not here. Okay, May is not here. Are you going to kill this Kiriko? I would say no, because the Kiriko, if she's in real danger, it'll just twist up over here and just drop to the side. She's not going to die here. Okay, even without the May, the Kiriko is not going to die here. Number one. 
because you haven't just seen her use Swift Step, so there's no reason that she should die here. Number two, the May here is going to body block at least some of this, and she can wall you off. Both of those things mean that the A, the, the Kiriko is not going to die, but also mean that you could very well die here. If, if she thought, hey, look, Kiriko could truly die here, she would just wall between you, and you're fine. But she's probably thinking, if you look right now, she's probably thinking, this Zarya is at half health and has no bubbles, because I've seen you use all your bubbles. You're going to die right now. I'm going to wall you off. And that's, I'm pretty sure, what actually happens here. So, as we mentioned earlier, you got walled off by the May and you didn't die. You didn't get punished for that mistake. But now you did. Right? And this is why we teach good habits. Even if the bat managed to save you somehow in this scenario, right? Or, or the Kiriko or whatever, you would still see this is clearly a mistake. Just like the last play where you're pushing too far up was a mistake. We want to make good decisions about the information we have available. This was a very bad choice to push in the scenario against a target that wasn't going to die, against another hero that could wall you off and prevent your escape, when you didn't have bubbles, you didn't have energy, and you're very far from your team. Right? This is like a, a quadfecta, I don't know if that's actually a word, but like a quadfecta of, of all the things that could possibly have gone wrong to choose to push this right now, they are basically, I, there was really no thing that was in your favor other than the Kiriko was like sort of low. Beyond that, everything else here was was the wrong call. Obviously, with you dead and your bat's dead, then that's gonna go. It's that's it. I would note here. I'm pretty sure your bat's gonna die because he doesn't have lamp. All right, so he's gonna get targeted here. All right. So if he has lamp right now, he could just lamp himself and he could and he would live. Now he doesn't have lamp because he, there's still six seconds left on it. You remember earlier when the bat got knocked out of position and he got spooked and he threw down lamp. There's a good chance he doesn't throw the lamp if you had pushed the rest of the team back, because then it would just be the ball alone shooting at your back with the Kiriko healing. Your back probably doesn't lamp, hopefully. I mean, maybe, again, this is platinum, right? So maybe he would make a mistake, but I think a higher rank back simply wouldn't lamp there because he would understand he had no, he was not at risk of dying, which means that he would survive right now. And if he survives right now, again, you know, maybe things play out differently. Probably not, since, you're, oh no, you're still alive right now. Oh yeah, 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 oh, this is even worse. Your back's actually dead while you're pushing it, which is even worse. You definitely should have played slow right now. Um, yeah. So, again, we see all the mistakes coming back to haunt you, right? All of those earlier mistakes coming back that they're meaning that, hey, you cost this. And this is actually a very strong choke, right? It's not uncommon for full holds to actually happen somewhere in this general area. So giving this up by just, like, throwing your life away here is, is really, really rough. Especially since you're, they weren't really getting a lot done. Like, it didn't feel like they were like, oh, yeah, they're really, like, breaking this open. Like, your team was having a, doing a good job of sustaining so when you come back here, I would recommend that you take high ground right away. Why should you take high ground? Because high ground is generally good. And as I say in all my videos, if you don't want high ground, you want low ground, you can drop instantly. But if you want to go the other way as a hero with no vertical mobility, this is a bad time because then you need to run all the way over here and go up the stairs and that sucks. As a note for Zarya is you should learn um, right-click jumps. I don't play Zarya a ton, so I, I don't know them all like, by heart. I don't know if you can make this right-click jump, but I, I feel like you could get pretty close if not actually, right? So you can go up here and, and right-click jump uh, right away. But the other option instead of doing that is actually just to go up the left ramp because it's not really a strong reason to go this way. Like think about who you're gonna encounter, the ball? You can't damage the ball. It's not going to do anything, right? You do 95 damage, like the ball actually does more damage than you do when you use zero energy, because he can just shoot you with the guns. And he has more health than you. So like, it's actually not a good trade at zero energy to be shooting the ball. So you can just come up here, right, and help take high ground, make sure nobody's up here. Remember, even if you don't want it, A, your team wants it, and B, the enemy team wants it too. So standing high ground, even when it's not valuable to you, is still valuable. A great example of this is Dorado second point defense. On defense, Reinhardt should set up, not that I recommend you play Reinhardt, on second point but if you are Reinhardt's set up on the top level where the church like in the, the top level of church where the normal sniper spot is not because the Reinhardt can use it obviously he's a hammer he can't do anything from up there and he throws really telegraph fire strikes that are never gonna hit anybody but because the enemy team is gonna try to take it away from your team and if you're already up there you can contest it but if you are on low ground then the enemy team is gonna dive your team on high ground and they're screwed without you and otherwise your whole I mean, your whole team plays, plays low ground then they stand above you and they're screwed as well
So I would just go high ground, here, right? Especially as Zarya, who has terrible mobility, you should take every opportunity when you have time to go high ground. Because getting out here is not going to make any difference, right? You're in one fight territory. If you don't know that, then you do now, right? Generally speaking, points are divided into two fights per point in Overwatch. So generally the way map design works. So this is fight number one, okay? And this is fight number two. So fight number one is already over. We're already fighting for fight number two. Whether or not the card is here or here functionally doesn't matter. Like you might say, oh, well, you know, let's say, you know, when we're pushing one or two meters might make a difference. Yeah, maybe, but generally speaking, it doesn't matter. The more important thing is to give yourself the highest percentage chance of winning this fight. If you go high ground here, let's say you have a 55% chance of winning the fight. If you go low ground, I think you only have a 45% chance of winning the fight. Is it that significant? It might be, for sure, right? Yeah, 10%, that's not unreasonable at all, especially if that have heroes who are good at taking high ground. Just think about it. If you're up here, it's gonna make it harder for the Sombra to set up close because she might bump into you, right? If she gets, you know, you might bubble somebody that's trying to target. You know, if somebody else reveals her, you might be able to help damage and get a kill, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're on low ground, right? If all five of you are playing on low ground, then the Sombra just sits above you and she gets to pick the perfect time to engage. And that's not good for you either. So obviously this is like a weird moment because like everyone's like, ah, do we go to the car or do we chase? It's actually okay to chase right now if the ball gets stuck in here. So if the tracer's able to like body block and prevent the ball from getting out, I think this is a reasonable time to chase. Why? The card is still really far away from the point. Again, we're already in this like final fight territory for this point. So stopping the cart here, right, versus here, versus here, it's not that big a difference. If you can get the kill on the tank, I would totally go for it right now, right? But also, if your team's going for it and you walk forwards without them, you're going to be disjointed and then you can get picked off. So this is actually a rare time where shooting the ball actually would be okay. Like, you are really far ahead of your team right now. It, so at a higher ranks, so what's going to happen here is the Sombra and the ball are all going to realize you're out of position. They're going to ping you and they're going to gauge right away. Like, you might not die, you might like get back in here, but you'll be low and having both bubbles used it will make it really hard to get back out and recontest the card. All right, so obviously we're, we're out here, we're, we're, we're fighting a little bit. So you're thinking about, hey, what's the right time to pop bubble? And that's a good question. I think that obviously you wanna get, get a point when you start taking some damage, right? Bubbling right away, probably not a great idea. I wanna look, look for the, what's the moment where I think they're gonna really start hitting me? Right now, at 367, now's where I think, hey, look, they might actually start hitting me here. So I can either A, pop bubble right now and start getting aggressive, or B, be like, ah, screw it, you know what? Let's see if I can get the Mega. But the Mega here is hacked, so obviously that would be a very bad idea, and you might get walled in. But right now, you for sure you gotta be popping the bubble. Also, when you hear the minefield, what should you do? Back up, right? Because if you play forwards, you're gonna get stuck in the opposite side of the minefield, which means you're dead, right? The minefield's gonna be like this. If you are over here, you're, you're, you're a goner. You're looking to get back in here, A, or B, if you have to, go this way. One of these two things. When ultimates are popped behind you, your general uh, game plan as a tank is to slow the fight down. Slowing the fight down means taking less damage, but also, of course, dealing less damage because you're further away. That's okay. Slow the fight down. If you go forwards, it's speeding the fight up, which is bad because your teammates need to deal with whatever the ultimate is in the back line. This applies to all, pretty much all the ultimates in the game, right? If Pfizer gets popped in your back line, if Venture's uh, ultimate, I don't even know what it's called, Venture's ultimate gets popped in your back line, if Mindfield gets popped in your back line, slow the fight down. There will be times where it is the correct call to step forward to zone the enemy team, but generally speaking, the call should be, hey, look, slow it down. Especially since this minefield is early, right? The rest of the team's like not fully ready to do anything about it. So like you can probably just walk away from this minefield and everybody, everybody here should be okay. I'd also be looking and be like, hey, look, did anybody get caught? Someone need to get bubbled here? That's a, this is a good time. So when you're bubbling and you're trying to get away, you should always think the bubble does not make you invincible, right? It absorbs what, 225 damage right now? Plus obviously the last instance of damage is infinite. So if we're trying, if we think, if we didn't have bubble, how would we be trying to live? We'd be running this way, right? You wanna get in cover as soon as possible. Instead, you take this angle really far out and you can see that this gives them a lot more time to shoot you than they would if you immediately got to cover. So with the bubbles, especially when you're low, people are gonna focus you anyway, plus you're walking through a minefield. So you might die here, right? Because you might not be able to pop the second bubble before, because the, there's a short cooldown between the two of them. You might die here before you can get the second bubble off. I want to get right to cover as soon as I possibly can to not die. But you're like, mm, 
right? You see, you see how you are going out like this instead of in like this right away. You're you're gonna get the full energy, right? Don't worry about it. You're already in a situation where like they are attacking you and you're low. Just get the cover right away because you'll get hard punished for this when people better aim or when they just do more damage because they have higher damage heroes. All right, Somber's here. All right, she's out. Great. So we have one ammo, right? Finish with the right click. We reload, unfortunate. Uh, right click right now does significant damage, right? Right click right now is going to do about 80 damage to her. That's not true. Uh, it's going to do about, about 55 damage to her. So, you know, not huge, but like right click melee would do a lot of damage right now. So this is one of the perils of playing a hero, playing against heroes that have the ability to instantly stop shooting at you. So like rapid fire heroes are a really good example. It's really easy for them to just stop shooting you, like a soldier, for example, at any only time to deny you charge. May Spray is a good example of this, where she's like, yeah, you know, I'll just, you know, I can stop shooting it and plus it doesn't do a lot of damage to begin with. So that's kind of bad. Versus like projectile heroes like Junkrat, Farah, right? They are, they struggle to be able to not hit you once you pop the bubble up. So a lot of things have gone wrong here, right? But the biggest thing is you are low. You are way too low, okay? Because you're not playing in cover at this moment in time. No one expects you after minefield gets popped to be taking space. No one needs you to push the team back. They just need you to stay alive while the team regroups and like repositions after the minefield. So you just wanna get the cover right away. And then when we're back here, right? We just take a second, right? To, to heal up after the minefield. Hack goes up, okay, zap, 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 right? Is what it is. We force up the Sombra, and then turn around, and then we can fight. But you'll notice that you've walked out into the open, and no one made you do this. You didn't get forced out of there by Minefield, you didn't get booped there. But while you're fighting here, you get hacked. Just turn and go in, right? Keep your back, not to the enemy, but to the wall. So if we just take this angle, we go in, we'll be fine. But instead, you're going out into the road. Now, what happens here is because you go out into the road, you get very, very low. So now you're down to half health which means now the maze is engaging on you, and now you end up using bubble because you're scared. And I understand that because using bubble probably is the right call here because you're one tappable. So you're forced to use bubble. But if it was me, this never happens, right? I fight the Sombra, I'm over here, even with this exact same mechanics. I obviously took some time to acquire and like actually start hitting her. But let's say like, you know, it took me just as long. I'll have 300 something health here because I didn't take any extra damage. In which case at 300 health, I don't bubble against the May because I know I don't get energy from May. May is a really bad hero to get energy from because she doesn't do a lot of damage. That way I would have that extra bubble right now. Instead of being critically low, now force the bubble, and now she's like, cool, see ya. And now she just walks away from you. And that's bad, right? We see, again, all the stuff is kind of coming together and making it really hard for you to do your job because you're not able to get energy and you're not able to have bubbles when you need them. Okay. Oh yeah, for sure you can do this. You can do the right-click jump onto the onto the station right just right click just jump up all right so you hear the ball right he's running around don't worry about killing these mines right not a priority your bat can, can already heal you here uh, this is a common thing for metal players is they're obsessed with killing uh props like symmetric turrets torb turrets teleporters even when they're not doing anything they, they like will literally not kill an, an enemy just to be able to destroy something else it's a little silly this mine is not harming anybody just go beam somebody else like, if you want to destroy any mine, I would destroy this one. Because this is the one that's actually blocking your path into the mega if you don't know that it's hacked. And because this is also your retreat path. Like, if you get up here and start fighting, you're going to try to retreat along the wall and get in. There's no reason why you're going to try to go all the way over there, typically, right? Especially if you're bat over there, you want to pull them towards your bat. All right. So, we have one bubble right now. We have full health. Again, we're looking for a moment where, like, either a teammate or I is going to be in serious jeopardy and they're actually going to commit to try to get a kill. So, am I in jeopardy right now? I'm not, right? I also know she doesn't even have wall because we just saw her use wall. So I'm basically full health right now. I have my support near me, right? I have my back with me, I have Kirko with me. I, these two heroes combined are gonna give you, what, like 130 plus healing per second, not including the burst from Suzu and Regen. There's no way you can die here, right? It's like, even if you're standing still, I think they can out heal the mate, like right click headshot. That's how much healing they give you. So you're not in any danger here. Maybe your teammates are in danger, but like probably not. So I just keep beaming. Right? Just keep aiming, just be play, play still, just still. But you pop bubble. But why did we pop bubble? Because May spraying us? So May spray, I think does 90 damage a second? It's terrible, like it's so bad, right? That it's about as much damage as your zero energy beam for perspective. So 
not a priority, right? Like, that's, it's not a thing that you need to be bubbling at full health. This is not something that, I know, like, probably when we get slowed, but the slow is also not dangerous to you. Now, you're not trying to get away or something like that. This is really bad. So then she pops ulti, and of course, now you don't have bubble for it. So I would actually have two more bubbles than you would right now. Think about how big that would be, right? If we suddenly just gave you two, two bubble charges right now, that'd be massive, right? You could save both your supports, or at least one of them, right? You could kill somebody, get some get some energy charge, kill the May through through the through the freeze, maybe. Like you got a lot of options. Well, with no bubbles, you're out of options here. So I would note, after it gets tossed, what's my priority right now? Is it to kill the Kiriko? No. The Kiriko is super far away, like maybe one right click. But frankly, not a priority. I don't think you can see your health from this far away, right? This is not a priority. Like, your DPS will have to deal with it. So, obviously, not the Kiriko. Option number two, is it to kill the Mercy? No, she's Valking. There's no way you're going to kill her, right? This is obviously a waste of time. Is it to kill the Ball? Also, no. The Ball's not threatening anyone. If, if he was going on my DPS, like, maybe. But, like, in this scenario, my DPS are healthy. The Ball's shooting at me. The Ball's not a threat at all. The only person here who's a threat is the Mei. Because the Mei can freeze both your teammates and kill them icicles. So my goal here is actually to focus the May. I want to force her to block, if she doesn't have block, but we know she doesn't have block, so she can die here. I'm trying to force the May to block or kill her before she kills my teammates, or at a minimum, trade for them. That's a huge part of doing this right now. So when you walk forward right now, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the ground for Blizzard. What is the exact radius of the Blizzard? Get outside of that radius and immediately start beaming the May down. Right? But you see how you're just jumping forwards. The This is right behind you. Just turn around. Like, I wouldn't even gone this far because I haven't heard the toss go behind me. Heard slash seen the toss go behind me. Right? So I can tell, like, she just threw it directly at her feet or she threw it forwards. So I'm mean, walking forwards. I turn around. Right? I see. And I go back in. So, like, this is what it would look like live. And I'd walk right back in right away. See? Like, that's the key instinct right now. And like, granted, yeah, the May managed to get on the corner, but if you'd done, what, 60 damage here? 68 damage? The May's dead. At least trade for one of your teammates. At least trade for one of your teammates, right? It is possible, even with relatively, like, lowish energy, totally possible right now that you could have killed the May and traded for your, traded for your bat. So, note here. This is, like, kind of close, but, like, when you play Zarya enough, you know this, you're not, definitely not in range. <laughs> like, I, I don't think, from my perspective, this does not feel close. Like, I know right away, this was never going to touch her. Like, it's at least four meters away from her. So, I would not be trying to, to burn down the Mercy. I would just try to burn down the, the, the May, who I think now is blocked, but at least forced block out. Because after block is forced, I can grab her after and get the kill if I need to. Again, like, even if you can hit her, you can't consistently hit her at this range, and she self heals. So like this is just not a priority for you right now. Aim for heroes. Like I know you're like okay, we gotta kill supports. We gotta kill supports. Valking Mercy is really not hittable by like ninety percent of the cast. Of the cast. That's one of the reasons that people hate playing against Mercy. <laughs> like there's no interactivity with many of the heroes once Mercy pops Valk. Like with regular GA, it's already hard enough. But when she pops Valk, it's effectively impossible to hit her as long as she has a hit scan weapon and a ranged hit scan weapon at that. So just just kill like anyone on the ground. All right, slam goes off. I should be looking. Hey, look, anybody here in danger? But I don't want bubble charges anyway. So you're aim for the mercy now, which I think is a good call. I think this is fine. Slightly better than mechanics, you can kill there a little sooner. All right, reloading. Slam goes off. Now I bubble. Yep, I think this is a good bubble. All right, Katsuna gets popped for some reason. This is definitely a mistake. Well, I mean, maybe you guys might lose. Still, I think you guys still lose this fight, but Katsune is not going to change change the nature of this fight at all. So, right now, Somber's out. So we saw Somber leave, right? Somber translocated this way. When we turn here. What do we see? We see Kiriko at a hundred health. No ball. We heard the ball is over here. Do we bubble? N no. Even if the ball was here, I wouldn't bubble. Even if the ball was here, I wouldn't bubble. It is very, very hard for ball to consistently do damage at that range against a Kiriko. I do not think that the Kiriko would die. I wouldn't ball here. I, I wouldn't ball here. If ball was fireballing, rolling towards her, yeah, I, then I would do it. Right? If he was playing here, yeah, I would do it. But at this range, I wouldn't do it, because I don't think you're going to get any energy out of this. Like, look how many bubbles you're consistently missing, right? With no, little to no energy on them over and over again. This is just, this is just the first fight. Okay. In the interest of time, 
because I feel like we probably already burned 30, 40 minutes already. In the interest of time, I'm going to start going through the rest of this faster. All right, so obviously trying to right click, right? Again, that for sure should have been a bubble. So you can hear the shooting above, right? I can hear like, okay, the kunai duel and like it's fighting. I can see how low my my Kiriko is. And I also don't know where the Somber is. So I would definitely bubble right now to make sure that my Kiriko lives. This is a mistake. So now you're trying to be, but you have no energy right now. I, I, it would be very difficult to win this fight because you have just no energy. So I have two bubbles. What am I, what am I looking for right now? So obviously Kiriko's dead, right? Both Kirikos are dead. My venture's in, no one's in the back line. I turn right away and I bubble. Why? They're not gonna focus me, right? I can already tell that they're all gonna go for the venture right now. Like right now, this has to be a bubble. They're all engaging. <laughs> because with the hack, like your, your venture nearly dies there. Good moment to jump up top, right? That would have been a, a bubble, a rocket jump, right click jump to get up high. And I also don't know where you're going. Like, I, I feel like you hear the Sombra up here, but it's not your job to deal with the Sombra anymore, okay? The Sombra is not close to you. You don't have mobility. If you're Winston or Tifa, yeah, you can go up there. But as Zarya, you can't. Your job is to deal with this. They're killing you on the sustained fight, right? Because their team is healing and your team doesn't. But even if you had, like, you know, you saved one of your supports, like, they're just doing more damage, forcing more cooldowns. Your job has to be, I need to apply pressure. They're totally ignoring you right now because you have no energy and you're not dealing damage. You can be, you have two bubbles right now, right? You have two bubbles, full health. You gotta be doing something at this moment in time. This is a very, very, very bad rotation, right? It takes you way too long to get up there. By the way, you don't even need to go there. You can jump from the tire and get up. Um, I think you do it later, right? So now, see, now we're forcing something at least, right? Venture just got killed on Sombra. So like maybe it's turnable. It's unlikely because you have no supports. But again, I have no energy right now and I know they're ignoring me. So I'm constantly looking back to see, hey, look, so anybody can bubble so that I can get energy and add something to the fight. Because you've been holding two bubble charges for how long now? Oh wow, a really, really, really long time. Holy, okay. So 318, okay? 324, 330, 336. I, these are five second skips, so there's no way you could use a bubble. Uh, you could use a bubble without us noticing. 343, okay, and finally at 345. So in a fight, this is not like between fights. In a fight for 27 seconds, you did not use bubble. <laughs> That can't happen, you know? It's not like their team is not shooting anybody. They're shooting somebody. There definitely were bubble options here, All right? Good job burning on the Mercy, right? So here, look, we're just trying to do what we can to, to fight this out. But I know here, do I want to pop grab? Now we skipped around a little bit, but we definitely know that both of their supports are dead, okay? We saw them die earlier and they definitely could not have come back in time. So unless I knew for sure, I mean, Kirigo managed to actually get back reason sure. Unless I knew for sure that the DPS are here to follow up, I don't grab right now. Especially if I don't know. I don't know if you know the status of the maid. At least you, at least you know that block is forced. But like with the ball also in it, he does a good job stepping into that. Right? This grab's not going to do very much. But team is actually able to follow up. So, I mean, I, I think you're actually fairly lucky that the adventure does a really good job following up on this. Well, mostly whiffs, but... We'll take it. <laughs> I, I think that I would, I would be very careful about scenario to grab. I don't feel like, obviously we skipped the round, but I don't feel like I knew that I had enough information there to know that the grab was definitely gonna do something. I think I would try to play defensively and try to figure out, hey, what's going on? Because like when I try and look here, I don't look at this as, oh, anyone's gonna help me, okay? Tracer's too far away. This is like three blinks for her to get in. Kiriko's probably just teleported. Bap's not gonna be here. And I'm like, I don't exactly know where the venture is right now. I don't think that I'm gonna pop this right now. At least she did have block force, at least, but... Yeah, because it's actually a wall, right? Why does the wall break? I feel like... Oh, because she walls off the... No, no, she walls herself up. Yeah. She she must camp... It's not it's not the card moving backwards, because the they, they have currently have someone on it. I feel like she just cancelled her own wall, which is pretty silly. This, I mean, I think... I mean, I guess maybe more vulnerable up there, she feels. But regardless, you know, I, I think there's a lot of reasons why this grab would not have worked. More more likely to not have worked than worked, and I would not have wasted grab on that. But maze obviously low. Good job tracking and not hitting the mines, right? But lamp gets forced. So don't worry about shooting all these mines, right? You only need one path to really get back. I just beam down these mines and go backwards. 
like don't worry about killing all in fact you actually don't want to kill all the mines you want to leave one alive because oh did they change that i think they changed it so it used to be that ball could not yeah yeah ball couldn't get ultimate charge when there was at least one mine alive and since it lasts quite a while it actually is a good way to deny ult charge but now it doesn't matter anymore so right here very strange but i would bubble this why well, first of all, we know there's not going to be a fight for the next 20 seconds because they just all died, right? They're going to have to respawn and walk back, blah, blah, blah. I, would, I have more than enough time to get both of my boulder charges back, right? So that's number one. Number two, he's gotten hit by a whole bunch of stickies. Stickies actually do a lot of damage. I think he could do something like 140 plus damage if they all land. Now, he didn't hit all of them, but he hit most of them. So I can bubble here and just get a, a you know, 25, 30 energy and then, you know, call it good. I'll take it. I like the way they said we go faster, but we have not actually gone faster at all. <laughs> so, Ball's pushing in. As a reminder, take high ground, okay? Because what I really want to do is not stand here. I really want to be like right here, beaming people down. Because from right here, I can beam basically everywhere and they can't walk forwards. But if you play over here, what are they going to do, right? If you play here, they're going to go take this lane and they're going to take top and they're gonna push out this way. And all of a sudden you do three angles. But if you just instead stand right here, you can beam everybody down right now. Now granted, yeah, like back cap is a possibility, but your whole team is here, like you're, you're fine. And it's not like you're in danger of getting picked. They have no way, it's not like they have a roadhog who could pull you off high ground. They have no way of killing you. You just stand right here and just keep beaming them. It's like very, very hard to do. That's a good example of zoning their back line. But you're all just standing here together. And this right now, you guys standing together is allowing their team to engage. Right now they're all setting up. Now obviously they're forcing out cooldowns up top. And of course you're not doing anything right now. Like just look, you're not doing anything meaningful right now that's stopping your team from getting walked over. Right now Katsune's popped and now we wasted all this time rotating. But we should have already been up here because I want to be here stopping them from walking forward with Katsune. Like I know, look, they're gonna use Katsune, they're gonna just run over my team. If I'm in their face, full health with two bubbles and high charge, they're not gonna walk through me. I'm gonna kill them. Even through Katsune, I'll kill them. So that's what you need to be doing is zoning them right now. But because you're late on the rotate, right? Now they get free access to your backlight and they're getting shredded right now. And you're walking around with two bubbles and no energy. <laughs> Obviously we can hype over the micro here like, like we have previously, but I think you get it, right? Like I think you understand like things, this is all the things here are going wrong because you're not bubbling people. You're not taking space. You're not being aggressive enough, blah, blah, blah. blah. All right. So truly we're gonna try to go faster. I'm really just looking for something, something interesting here, right? Because like, you're making the same mistakes over and over again. Once again, we see, hey, look, you've already used bubble, but you have 14 energy right now, which means something has gone wrong. <laughs> and it's hard, right? Like playing Zarya, it's not, it's, it's not that easy of a hero. You need to learn a lot of things. I mean, not like any of the tanks are easy, right? I, I can't think of a single tank that I would consider easy. Roadhog is arguably, I think, the easiest hero if you had good mechanics, but bad game sense. <laughs> And even then, it's not like you can have no game sense of Roadhog, but like relatively speaking to the other heroes, I think he's probably the easiest hero to play if you had good mechanics. If you had poor mechanics and poor game sense, probably Reinhardt. Reinhardt gives you a lot of kind of default value just from walking at them with the shield. So note here, you can right click melee and confirm this kill. So she's at 43 health. So melee alone will get the kill, but like in the wind up time, she might get enough healing. But a right click melee for sure kills her, right? Even at zero energy, right click does 45 damage on a direct. So on a splash, she probably does what, like 30, 35. So just a splash at her feet and melee would, would guarantee this kill. But you wait too long and now she should have lived, but barely, barely dies. It's funny that you killed the Kiriko first. It's, it's actually a good call because the auto has no way to get away, but. I probably would kill the Ana because you never know what might happen. Like if I kill the Ana, this is for sure over, but you probably realize that you're gonna win the fight anyway, which is fine. All right, same wall gets popped. So generally correct decision, obviously, with ultimates we discussed is the backup. Unfortunately, your back is really overextended here. So I understand trying to step forwards. Once again, we see that you have zero energy constantly, <laughs> which is a big problem. So. I, I'm walking way forward right now. I don't know where you're going. I'm walking forward to save my back, 
Because I have bubbles, right? I have one bubble and grab. I go over here and save my BAP. Go over here. At least I'm going to get energy out of it. Because my BAP dies. We're going to lose this fight no matter what. I'm definitely not going to try to kill the Symmetra through a 40,000 health wall. That's not the call. Just go over here and try to bubble the BAP. What do you... Using bubbles to purge is a terrible idea. Like, I'm not saying it's never a time to do it. It's just... In this situation where she gets hit by a grenade but is otherwise not in danger, I'm not going to bubble this. Like, yeah, the auto might hit a dart, but she needs two darts to kill. If she hits one dart, then I'm bubbling. But if she doesn't hit a dart, I'm not bubbling this. Especially if I don't know if she used Suzu or not, if she has used Suzu. Right. We've used two bubbles. We got 34 energy. This is a disaster. All right. Katsune's pop. Your DPS are hard carrying. Like, your DPS are playing really well, actually. <laughs> all things considered, like, we don't see them dying. We don't see them dying first, and they're able to follow up on all the plays that you try to make. So, I think um, DPS are, at least from your perspective, seem like you're doing a good job. And remember, they're under a ton of pressure, right? Because the ball's not going for you. The ball's constantly going for your backline. So they're getting a lot more pressure than it would be if you were facing off against, like, a Reinhardt. All right. So you managed to hold. Okay, great. So, offense. Why, where does it go wrong? Quick note here. So right click not only deals damage, but it also budges people a little bit. Like there's a little bit of a push effect on it. It's not strong, but it is noticeable. Okay, it, it definitely is noticeable. So two things, two tips I want to give you. Number one, if you right click to the left of them, it's gonna slow them down. It's gonna pop them in the air slightly, and then they're gonna have to walk back. That could be enough for someone to get the kill. Obviously, you're doing you know a, a reasonable amount of damage right now. You're 38 energy. But not necessarily enough. Like I don't look at this and think, oh, they're gonna die here for sure. But with right clicks, especially if I right click them again, I'm lowering my DPS, my DPS against them, like my damage, my actual damage against them, I'm lowering, but I'm keeping them exposed longer, which means my teammates might be able to follow up and get the kill. That's what I'd be thinking. I do probably one right click here and then try to beam down the sim, is what I would do. A. B. When you're fighting against an evasive hero that you can't consistently beam, so Kirigo is a good example of this, as is Symmetra, not Torb, not Moira, who are pretty large hitboxes. But when you're fighting an evasive hero, right click their feet and then beam them. It's a really good tip I learned way back. Because, again, as I mentioned, it bumps them in the air a little bit, like pops them a little bit, which makes it much easier to track. Uh, this is insane. <laughs> so, I know you're thinking, oh, I'll use this opportunity to beam down the turret and get some energy out of it. But A, you're already very low. Reminder, Zarya is like one of the lowest health tanks. I, I think it's like her and Junker Queen are like the, the weakest ones, not including Ramatra's uh, uh, Omnic form. So you could die really, really quickly. B, you're standing still, which basically doubles or triples the damage that you're gonna take on average. So this is actually insane right now, especially since you could just right click the turret to death. There's no need to step here all the way out to the edge and beam it. Like, I can understand if you could beam it from here. Okay, fine. But, like, standing all the way here, you get murdered. You drop all the way down to five health. You're so lucky to not be dead here. Yeah, you can see the turret. Great. So, beaming back line. Okay, great. I think dropping is kind of crazy. So, things like this. And I, maybe this comes a little bit from Tracer. Tracer has a lot of get out of jail panic buttons. Right? You have three blinks, you have rewind, you can do a lot of crazy things. Right? Mobile heroes have lots of ways that they can survive. When you play groundbound immobile heroes like Zarya, who's probably the most immobile of the ground-based tanks, right? Even Junker Queen has a uh, Roadhog. Roadhog's more mobile than you are, right? Because you, you can jump at least. But when you play very immobile heroes, you have to think ahead. Is the spot that I'm in actually gonna be someplace I can survive? Because I have no other way to get out otherwise. So you're dropping into three heroes right now. Granted, like you know that your tracer is there, so I can sort of understand this. But like I don't know for sure that my tracer is gonna hard commit here, and I don't know that my supports are for sure gonna save me here. Especially since I don't actually know where the ball. Like I hear the ball shooting, but like the ball could be coming over here and like engage on all of us, and we might die. I would probably just play this normally. Like, I would just drop here and just beam them down. Nobody can stay here. If Azaria, no one can stay here against you and not die. Like, you're just gonna, you're gonna force them back so quickly. Dropping behind them is a big, big commitment. And I don't think I necessarily see anything here, especially with only one bubble, that tells me for sure that I would do this. Two bubbles, I would think about it for sure. But one bubble, I think this is kind of tricky. 
So you'll notice right now that we're at 98 health, or sorry, 98 energy, but we have no bubbles and 180 health. And we're getting beamed down right now. We are extremely low. So your adventure's gonna die right now. This is a great example of why not to jump. I tell people this all the time. Nobody believes me, but you can see how easy it is for you to beam the symmetry right now because she's jumping. You see how you're missing when she was strafing? But as soon as she's jumping, your tracking is basically perfect. Again, don't jump. <laughs> Do not jump. 99% of the time, do not jump. There are occasionally times where jumping is the right call, but for most of the time, do not jump when you're trying to stay alive. You have 51 ammo. I mean, yeah, nothing's happening here right now. It, like, you see, like you're in a weird situation where it's like either you're like, hey, look, everyone's far away, let me reload, or or like you're like, hey, look, I'm, I'm farming ultimate here, in which case, right click all your ammo down. Like, this is three shots. 51 ammo is functioning the same as 75 ammo right now. Why are you reloading? If you're going to right click, just right click it all. All right, burning the Kiriko, okay, great. Good, 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 you know, good attempt, right? Obviously she switched steps out, but that's fine. Like we got her low. So we have one and a half bubbles right now and there's a turret here and we're healthy. What do we do? Just kill a turret. Just walk over and kill a turret. Like why, why would we not kill a turret here, A? And B, why are we reloading with 37 ammo? Just kill a turret. Even if you wanted to back, if you're like, oh, I can't stay up here, I gotta back up. Right click the turret as you walk away. Two right clicks will already nearly kill a turret. So we have still not killed this turret. <laughs> Luckily, your Baptiste is bailing you out. You come back here because the ball's stalling. I think this is fair, right? I think this is fair to come back. Make sure the ball doesn't, stop, doesn't, doesn't keep stalling. So Trace is going to die here. I can't help but feel that at least part of the reason your Tracer dies here is because of your fault. Because you're not really doing anything, right? As I mentioned earlier, every single time they're shooting at you is a time where they're not shooting your teammates. So let's say hypothetically, if you were me, I would have killed this turret, I'd look back and be like, oh, okay, the ball's like stalling cart, but like, I can't do anything, I'm really far away. My bat will go back, my tracer will go back. That's fine, I would just keep pushing out this side, right? Flush them out of mega and keep pushing. Like, they can't stop me. <laughs> they, they literally, once, once you're at 70 energy, right? You're like one of the most dangerous heroes in the game, if not the most dangerous hero in the game, and you have bubbles that both block damage, including an infinite instance of damage, and prevent you from being CC'd. Like, Zarya is crazy strong. <laughs> like, you could literally, with centipede energy and, and two bubbles, I would walk in and kill all three of them here. There's no way. Like, even if they both, like, you do so much damage that if both of these supports were pocketing the Torb, you could still kill the Torb through a double support pocket. That is how much damage you do. <laughs> it's like, do not underestimate. Obviously, you shouldn't target the Torb first, but I'm just noting, like, the damage you do is nuts. Especially knowing that she's not so stab. But see, like you take another like 200 plus damage from the turret because you just, just didn't kill the turret. I think you're also, I mean, A, I think you don't have a lot of hours in Zarya, but I think you're definitely having trouble processing all the information that's going on, right? Like it feels to me like you forgot the turret was even there, would be my guess as to why you dropped in the open here and didn't go for the mega, which would have been also a better plan and would have gotten you back to the cart faster by going through the inner tunnel. But again, uh, actually, the point I was trying to make was the fact that you're not pressuring forwards. Hey, look, look how much damage the turret, the turret does the tor to, to, to your Zarya, right? Because you didn't kill the turret. It really is your fault that the, Zarya, the, the, the Tracer dies here, right? Tracer said half health from the turret alone. And she goes in here, she's trying to get the Mega. There's no Mega here, right? Now she's chilling. She's like, oh man, I'm kind of danger here. She's trying to get away here, right? She gets hit by the ball, gets knocked out of position. Now she jumps forward. She happens to eat, I think, a Torb shot plus the, the heal. But again, if you were up here zoning them, this never happens. So you've already blown, blown through a whole minute and gotten nothing done. Yeah, kill turret. It's fine. So I think this is a reasonable bubble, right? It's because Sim was here, right? It was just the just the ball. I don't care. But I would also bubble my Baptiste right now because he's walking through a minefield and I don't know like what the status is of like if they can engage on him or not. Yeah, see, <laughs> right? Bubble right there. And right after you kill her, you got time right here to bubble the the bat. Not a lot of time, but definitely time. I would back up for sure. I would hard back up because as Zarya, energy is the most important thing, right? You're like a like an RPG character, right? Or like a MOBA character. If you can stay high in energy, you will basically level up and the next fight is dramatically easier. But if you die, you reset everything. At high level games, right? At high, high, high MMR games, you'll see people will like suicide two, three people to make sure that a high energy Zarya doesn't come back, right? As long as they won the fight already, they'll just, just suicide people to make sure to reset the energy. It's massive. 
Coming back to the next fight with, you know, 70 energy and two bubbles it makes it extremely likely you're going to win the fight. So you should be willing to do anything to survive a fight with high energy, including throwing teammates under the bus. Unquestionably, throw teammates under the bus, supports DPS, whatever. The most important person on your team is Zarya, right? High energy Zarya out-trumps out everybody. Good job not bubbling here. So right now we're obviously just absolutely melting the ball because like he, th he he does not realize how much damage you do. <laughs> like look, like you're just absolutely, you're just, it's just you hitting him basically. Like you're just frying him right now because you're high energy. And this is what we're looking for all game long is to be in this state where you have high energy and two bubbles. Like this is, should be pretty much a win right now. So yeah, bubble walk through this. I, I think that three mines is too many mines. So I think two, two, two mines would be okay. But three mines is too many, especially if the Torb hits it, because then it's going to pop. Two of them are just going to pop it, and you're going to eat that last mine, right? So now you take too much damage. So I would have, I know you really want to kill on Torb, but I would have destroyed at least one of those mines, if not two of them, before walking through that. Another thing to note is once you are high energy, you should save bubbles almost exclusively to keep yourself alive. Don't think, when, uh, like basically, I would say high energy is like 60, 60 and above. Do not use bubbles just to try to get energy. Use bubbles to allow you to keep beaming somebody down, right? Because there's a little bit of like where you feel like, oh, let me let me walk through these mines, get even more energy. But the reality is you could have very briefly tagged these two mines and walked through and beam them down and not used your bubble at all, right? And then you'd have two bubbles right now. And imagine your two bubbles. If you're two bubbles, I just stand here and I kill the Torb. He cannot survive. As I mentioned earlier, you can kill him even through a double support pocket. Like, he just dies here if you have two bubbles. But with only one bubble, you see how he stays alive here. And that's the difference, right? Just understanding, hey, look, I, you know, what's the right, what's the right idea to use the bubbles? It changes completely, right? When you're lower in energy, you can be more aggressive about the bubble usage. But when you're higher in energy, you want to use bubbles almost exclusively to allow you to keep applying damage. So, let's think about this. What do we know has happened? We know the ball died because we killed him, right? For sure, there's no way you could say you did not know the ball died. The ball is dead. He's still the, still on the screen. You can see that he's dead. You killed him yourself. The ball is dead. Other than that, we don't really know anything else is going on. So we're going to assume all four of them are alive. Now, right now, we know that the point is divided into two fights, okay? Fight number one is over here, and fight number two is over there, right? One, two. My question is, why are we grabbing, right? My first question is, I would grab here if I did not think we were going to win point the, the first half of the point, right? This, this one area right here. But the ball is dead. I'm extremely high energy. And we just got the sword down to half and forced overload out. So am, am I not just going to walk into them after this and then win it? Like, that has to be thought process. Like, there's no way that they could stop us from taking number one. Number one is done. So the, now we're at number two. So with number two, great. I can use graph for number two. The other scenario that we could pop grab for is we know they're staggered, and we know that we can stagger them enough that point two is an easy cap. This would make sense if the cart was like here, right? If the cart's here, right, and then you grab them probably they don't come back and contest number two. Not really. Like maybe the ball like spins around for a little bit or whatever, but like probably fine, like mean cap. But with a cart this far away, this is the difference of like, I don't know, like probably like 12 seconds or so. That's a really sizable difference. Like that's enough time for people to respawn completely. That's basically taking down the spawn timer completely. They're going to get back. So even if this grab worked, even if it worked, like as in you get kills, I still think this is a bad grab because there's nothing in the game state that tells you that this is a good time to be grabbing. A. B. Let's talk about grabs. Whenever you grab, you must think that one of two things are going to happen, right? Well, first of all, you want the people to die, but how do they die? Either I'm gonna get the kills or my team are gonna get the kills. 75% of the time, that's probably a little high, probably like 60% of the time, I need my team to get the kills. Doesn't mean I literally do zero damage, but it means like I myself am not gonna be able to consistently get a kills or get enough kills to make this grab worth it. Now, if you're gonna grab and you know you need your team to help, then you're gonna grab them someplace where your team can see them. <laughs> I know it seems obvious, but 
as we can see, it does not happen on a very regular basis. Even up at the, the old like diamond level, I used to still still see Zarya's all the time. When they grab people in places where I'm like, there's obviously you grab them around the corner. Like no one no one can do anything about it. This is the corner. Right? So if you, the Zarya, pop the grab here and your teammates are over there, they can't help you. That's all you. Okay? So a note here is if you grab this your teammates are not going to help you. Maybe the maybe the Pharaoh can get some damage in, but like the timing is going to be tough, right? The timing is definitely going to be tough. I would want to grab here. If I grab here, that's okay. It's like a little on the corner, but it's a close enough that they're going to get around the corner, right? Obviously, grabbing them like right here on top of the cart that would be amazing. Then everyone's going to die, obviously, right? Me, even here, maybe, right? At least here, the Pharaoh rockets are going to have a much shorter travel time. She's going to get two rockets in for sure. Over here, she might only get one. So, that's the general idea. If I'm grabbing and I'm expecting my team to help, they need to be able to see the grab. Very basic, but yes, absolutely massive. If your teammates can't see the grab, they're not gonna be able to help you. Now, not all grabs require your team to be there. Some grabs, you can just get the kill yourself, right? A good example is, oh, hey, the Moira's here and she's fighting me, right? I know she's like one second away from Fade, then I grab her. I could be in a, in a room all by myself, and I'll still kill her. Right? As long as I have any amount of energy, I'm gonna kill it, right? All I need to do is grab last for, what, like two and a half seconds or something like that? As long as I, as long as I am not like zero energy, I can just solo kill her myself. Great, do it, yeah, that's totally fine. Grabbing, just for you to solo kill, totally fine. And with high energy, sometimes you can grab and kill multiple heroes. The key thing, if you're going to grab and kill them yourself, two things. Number one, most obviously, you need to have ammo. <laughs> And it's really hard because often the, the enemy are more vulnerable the less ammo you have because your damage to them is making them appear more vulnerable and it's forcing out cooldowns. And two, you're flushing them out of cover by the fact that you are damaging them. So it's gonna be very tempting to grab when you're low on ammo. And then you think, can I reload and kill them? And the answer is usually no. So I'm just noting, if I'm going to grab and get the kill myself, I usually need to have a good amount of ammo, at least 50, ideally 75 plus, but at least 50. 50 it depends on how much energy you have, obviously, and how tanky they are. But 50, 50 is probably like, I can't imagine solo grabbing somebody with less than 50 unless they were very low. Okay. So we established one, ammo. Two, do they have any cooldowns that can prevent me from killing them? Because if my whole team is involved, there are very few cooldowns that will save them, right? They have Lamp, Lamp's gonna die instantly. They have Suzu, more than enough damage to kill them after the Suzu lands, right? Like obviously it's an ultimate, it's a different story, like Transcendence, they might not die regardless. But like if, if they have any other defensive cooldowns that are health and durability based, I may not kill them. Obviously mobility is disabled, but like Baptiste Regen Burst is a good example. Suzu, on a grenade to some extent, right? Those are things that they can use to keep themselves alive through the grab if it's just me. So there's a little bit of math in your head really quick. And again, you don't like, I don't literally do math when I'm playing this, it's just from, from games that's doing it over and over again, as to who can I actually kill solo before the grab ends. So as we've already established, this grab is not for your team, it's for you, right? So it's not, it's not the type one grab, which is the best grab where your team can help, but it's okay. Obviously, not all grabs mean, I should not say that grabs that are not meant for your team are bad grabs. All it matters is that people die. You kill them, your team kills them, doesn't matter. Just all it matters is that they die. But if they don't die, you definitely screwed up or force the defense molten, which is, which is okay. That's a, that's a draw. So you have grabbed them yourself. Your teammate is teammates are not able to help at all, which means you must do all the damage. The bad news is you're already pretty far away from them. You're not even in beam range right now. So beam range is 15. So beam is gonna go out to like roughly here, which means you need to walk forward for about a second before you can start beaming. That's bad because that's one second of the grab that you're not gonna be able to, be able to beam anybody. Number two is you have decided to grab the Moira who has fate. But the record, she has a lot of time to dodge this. They see, like, there's so much time here to, 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 for her to dodge this. I think you're also trying to pull the Torb in, and I think you might actually get him. But either way, this is a big risk for the Torb, who like, I kind of feel like I would just kill him anyway. Again, I'm high energy, I just chase him down. How's he gonna get away from me? 
Like he's gonna die. Like this. If 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 I'm the Zarya at high energy and I walk this way, what's the Torp gonna do? He's dead. If he retreats over here, I kill him. If he stays up here, my team kills him. If he comes over here, my team kills him. Literally, just walking diagonally guarantees the Torb's death. I don't need to grab him to make sure he dies. If he had overload, he could get away. But since we saw him use overload, he's not going to be able to use it to run faster. Okay. So. Moira, focusing on this. She has Fade, so she should have dodged it. But even without the Fade, she doesn't have a healing orb, which is good. Right? But healing orb doesn't really heal enough that it matters typically for you. In this scenario, it, it, it's still gonna it's gonna do enough. But the reason why fade's relevant is not in the grab; it's after the grab. Often, when you grab people, you still have about a second after the grab to kill and finish them off. But more, you don't because she's just gonna hold shift, and the second the, the grab ends, she's she's out of there. So your timing window for this is so small. And the thing is, you did this. Like this is an unforced error. Okay? And there's a big difference between unforced errors and forced errors. Forced errors are, oh god, I'm being jumped by a whole bunch of heroes, I get low, I pop the grab. That is a forced error. It's still an error, but it's an error that you understand because you're pressured, you're not thinking clearly. Okay, and it's, you know, we work on those, obviously. You work on all your errors. But this is an unforced error. There's no reason for you to be doing this. It's not like you're like, oh god, we have no time left in overtime, I need to make sure to get, a, get picks and staggers or something like that. You have two minutes and 30 seconds left, the ball is dead. They're really far away from you. They're not even like close up. Like I can actually walk around the corner. Where's her here? Like, oh, maybe I can grab and get this kill before she fades. But you're so far away. This is a totally unforced error. So of course now you go over here. And once again, we're gonna we're gonna see the beam range. I wanna keep showing this to you so you understand like how far beam goes. As I mentioned earlier, right? You see the beam does not does not go far enough. Like okay. The other problem here is why are we even trying to beam the torb? Let's, let's imagine the Torb is in range. Okay, let's forget the range for a second here. If the Torb is here, why did you need to graph? You know what I mean? Like, if your goal here was, I'm gonna kill the Torb, what? You didn't need, you didn't need to graph for that. <laughs> if you think I can only kill the Torb if he's in the grab, then fine, right? You, you would hit him only if he's in the grab. You, you see what I mean? By, obviously rhetorical. None of the decision making makes any sense here because your goal here is either to kill the Moira, kill the Torb, or kill both. Okay? If it's to kill the Moira, the Moira is grabbed, you should beam the Moira. If it's to kill the Torb, then the Torb isn't in the grab, and I presume that it meant that you wouldn't have been able to kill the Torb without the grab, in your mind. You think you would have been able to kill the Torb without, without, if he's not in the grab. He's, he's not in the grab, so why are you trying to beam the Torb? And if you kill the Moira and the Torb, well, the Torb is not in the grab. The Moira is in the grab, so you should beam the Moira to make sure she dies because she has fate. You, you see what I mean? None of the decision making here makes any sense. Like, there's no, there's no scenario that I could craft up where like this field felt like a reasonable decision in any way to be beaming the Torb right now. Like, I understand the grab itself. Like, I can get why you might have done this, but trying to beam the Torb right now, ignoring the fact that he's out of range, doesn't make any sense to me. You should definitely be beaming the Moira now. That's the whole point. The only thing I think of is you could think you think your whole team is going to kill the Moira, and then you could also get the Torb. But you can see that nobody's shooting the Moira, so definitely beaming the Moira is the right call here. So she keeps herself alive, and then she gets away. That's basically going to cost you the game. And it shouldn't cost you the game, because you still have 100 energy, and you have 2 minutes and 20 seconds left. But it's basically going to cost you the game. Because from here, if I recall, I saw this a few hours ago. It, from here, it's just going to be kind of a struggle to just like get in sync with your team and get into the right positions and do the right thing. Right? And I think it's also helpful to think you should not miss a grab all game long. I think that is, for, at least for Old Diamond, I would say that is par for the course. You should play an entire game as Zarya and not expect to miss a single grab. A missed grab is one that either A, literally misses them, or B, pulls them in, but clearly is not going to be able to get any kills. A missed grab, I would not qualify if it forces B, if it forces Transcendence, if it forces Life Weaver Tree, that's fine. We call it a wash. 
Okay, obviously better if you can kill them through the ultimate or without the ultimate, but like it, it happens, right? That's the whole point of defensive ultimates. But an ultimate that does not result in kills is a is a miss or a whiff. You should not expect to whiff a single ultimate in a game and expect to win, especially grav. Grav, shatter, right? Primal people whiff all the time. Primal is a really hard one, and you get a lot of value just from like existing on primal. But you should not whiff a single grab or shatter in the game. Diva bomb is another example of, of like a low value one, right? Like I, you never expect to get a, get a get a bomb kill of diva. You can play an entire match and never get, not get a single one. Especially at high range, you like very rarely see one. But grab, every grab should be a kill. If I play Zarya and a single grab I pop does not result in a kill, I already assume I'm going to lose the game. I assume I would feel like I deserve to lose because grab is a relatively easy ability to hit. And it's super high. It locks someone in place, right? Like they're literally stationary and they can't use any of their escape cooldowns. So, and it's an AOE ability. So it's like pretty easy to get kills with Grav. So the fact that you whiff here is already really, really setting yourself up for failure. Okay, from here, oh, you're trying to chase on the Torb, which is a good idea, but you know, it gets around the corner. So when I see the Torb actually keep going, right now it's the forward and get, get the kill. What is he doing? Like, this is insanity. I, I have 90 energy. I still have 50 ammo here. I just step forward and kill him. He's going to die right now. Even through pockets, like as I mentioned, even through pockets, I'm going to kill him right now. And if you're like, hey, look, I'm in danger here, just walk in and get the mega. Right? They're not running Sombra anymore, so the, the, the health is not going to be hacked. I want to be holding this spot anyway on Route 66. We, we don't have time to talk about like the positioning on this map at all, which is a shame. But, like... This is an enormous opportunity to just kill the Torb. Or even if I don't kill the Torb, I just force a ton of cooldowns, right? Take the Mega, keep applying pressure, right? I'm like, I reload, get the Mega, and I go right back at it. The high energy Zarya is a menace. I don't know if you've seen my, my Zarya like, gameplay guide at all, but if you watch some of it, and you'll see that once I hit high energy, the game is just over. Like, if I, if, unless they can find a way to kill me, or like my whole team die, dies to ultimate or something like that, I just kill everybody. Because once you're high energy, no one can stand, like this is, Route 66 is tough because it's vertical, right? That's one of the reasons why I wouldn't like play on it. But like once you, once you are high energy, once you're high energy, everything in a 15 meter range of you just dies or has to run away. Like it's crazy. Like it, literally, they all need to just immediately run away. Anywhere you go, they all need to immediately retreat away from you because you're outrageously dangerous. Unless they have a really high health barrier, like Reinhardt or Ramatra, they basically all need to, to, to scurry like rats away from you. That's like the fun, that's the power fantasy of Zarya. Once you hit that point, you got the bubbles, easy mode. The hard part is, if they're playing poke heroes or dive heroes, you can't get to anybody. That's where things are harder with Zarya. But if they're gonna try to brawl you straight up without a barrier, aka shield, you, they're in for a bad time when you have energy as Zarya. And this is your moment, right? This is your moment where like, even with zero bubbles right now, Warrior's not gonna do any damage to me. Torb can, but Torb alone is not gonna do enough. And I have the Mega to be safe. Without the Mega, I can play differently. But with the Mega, I'm good here, right? Torb, Kiriko, fine, no problem. Just kill, just gonna kill everybody right now. All right, so we're pushing forward right now. Uh, your Pharaoh's died, which is unfortunate. So this is kind of tough because now that my Pharaoh is dead right away, and that they have popped Katsune, I actually really don't want to be fighting this anymore. But as Zarya, you don't have an escape button, right? If I could, I would immediately leave this fight, because I don't want to, I, I think the odds of us winning are very, very low. Because they've already popped a very powerful ultimate, A, and B, I've lost the hero. So our odds of winning a fight has gone from 50-50 to like 25%, and they control high ground. So maybe like 20%? I really do not want to be taking this fight right now. So. I think the actual best move, and I don't know that I would do it, is to literally just leave. Like, just turn around, run through, jump over, get the Mega, and leave. And that's what I mean by playing selfishly in Zarya, when you have high energy, is like, nobody's life matters but yours. <laughs> it's very different than playing other tanks, where it is okay to sacrifice yourself for other heroes, for them to be able to carry the fight. High energy Zarya is the hardest carry there is in the game, so very important to maintain energy. But... I think what I would do is I would try to beat the, the Mora and then I would go back in the gas and try to regroup with my team and see if we can stabilize with Katsune. Despite, despite the Katsune is what I mean. But I do not think I chase around the backside of the gas station because every step you take forwards makes it easier for them to cut you off. 
right? As soon as you've gotten this far, there's basically no way that you can escape this fight alive, which is really unfortunate because you have a lot of energy right now and the odds of you winning are not good. There goes your bat. So I'm just trying to get away right now. I, go, I don't try to kill anybody. I'm trying to get to Mega. But I think you get chased down here no matter what at this point. Yeah, obviously you're going to die here. And it's unfortunate because you had a ton of energy. But you see what I mean? Like, hopefully it clicks with you how quickly I knew the fight was lost. Right? I knew way back. Right? If I killed the Torb here, I, there's, there's a possibility that we could win this. But having not killed the Torb right now, right now I turn around and go home. Right? Right now it's like, nope, that's it. That's it. It's not worth it. If I was another hero that doesn't have energy, yeah, maybe I'd try to fight it out because, like, why not? Like, you know, we just die here. Like, Reinhardt, I fight it out because, like, what's the point? If I get away, it doesn't change anything. You know, maybe I can just farm to try to get an ultimate or something like that. But like, as Zarya here, absolutely your priority should be to keep your energy. All right, sun goes off. When you're really desperate for energy, like coming out of spawn like this, it can be worth it to bubble. So right here, slam is 100 damage. So bubbling right here is gonna get you 20 energy. It's not terrible. All right, so you got great energy out of the first bubble. So. Yep, just forward, forward, forward. Yep, beam down the soldier. Great, great, great. Yep, tracking's good. I still have 17 ammo. Why am I turning around? All right? Just keep keep applying pressure. You know your team's behind you. You know the ball has finished his engage. Because you saw the first engage, right? Ball has a rhythm. He he sets up, he goes in, he slams, he shoots a little bit, then he rolls away. During that roll away, apply maximum pressure. Okay? When he hasn't struck yet, that's when you need to slow. Like, if I don't know what the ball is, and I'm like, okay, now I'm going to play slow, play at the corner, whatever it is. When I hear the ball engage, I back up, right? We beam them and beam them down. I hold the I hold the corner if I need to, right? Depending on what's what's going on over here. Then ball rolls away. Great. Now I push, 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 right? It's like playing against, against Bastion, right? When he has assault form, you have to play around it. Once assault form is over, you push like crazy to get as much space as you can. But right now, you're losing out on that opportunity because you can keep being aggressive here, not by walking forwards, but just finishing the rest of your ammo and right clicking, right? You're bubble right now. You're safe for another full second at least. And the fact that you've double support behind you, like you can keep beaming here, right? From this moment in time, I could now switch and just beam the Kiriko. Am I gonna kill her? No, but I might force something. She might get spooked here in Swift Step or Susan. Like just do it, right? Like you said, seven yeah, just keep doing it, right? Now, okay, well, work gets popped, fine, no problem. Not an issue at all. Yeah, see, easy. So don't get too crazy here. Because I would check here and look at what the pool locations are to understand like where, where am I actually safe. But you're good here. So I would understand, hey, look, the ball is probably walled here, right? So I'd look, hey, is the which side is the ball on? And confirm where the ball is. Because or at least now I would hear the ball rolling, and now I'm definitely trying to kill the ball. This is a lost opportunity right now. This ball should be dead. Oh man, it's his getaway. He gets away! Oh wow, what a throw. That's crazy. <laughs> You hear it too. Like you hear the ball, right? Wall goes up. I can understand that you think the wall, ball's on the other side, but you see it right here. But when you start hearing the rolling right now, and again, my, my volume is down 30%, right? Like literally in game, this I can hear it right now on my headset. This the sound of the ball rolling would be three times as loud in, in the actual game. There is for sure you would hear the grapple and the roll. I would immediately turn and beam the ball down because the ball is crazy low. At this moment in time, right, the ball's forward. I beam the ball, right? Ball straight ahead, he's at 100 health. So right here, you do your best effort. Tracking here is good. He gets low, and as soon as he jumps right here, I understand I'm really low on ammo. Again, this requires a lot of Zarya game sense to know how much ammo you have when you beam. Right click right under him here to get the kill. Because right now, you're going to do 95 damage with that right click. Which is more than enough to kill the kill the kill the soldier in the air. So you can air shot him here with a right click. I think this is a very advanced technique. I would not expect this below. Mm, I would say old masters, right? Which is probably now diamond to to be able to hit this shot. But just noting to like the awareness that you definitely could have killed him here, even through coalescence. All right, back to is this is this grab for you or is this grab for your team? Now, you might say, oh, hey, well, uh, the, the ball over health makes the difference. Ball over health makes the difference. Actually, I guess the ball over health maybe saved the, helped save the soldier. Yeah, ball over health helped save the soldier. But 
We're going to grab right now. For the record, this grab is actually quite short. There's no reason that anybody in the back line should have gotten hit here. The reason why it hits them is because the mortar walks forwards into this into this uh, grab, right? So she could have just backed up right now. It's not it's like it was on her, even backing up would pull her in. But she actually walks forward quite a bit. Any amount of backing up here would have saved her from going in the grab. A. B, the mortar has fade. So again, she should not get caught in the grab. At higher ranks, you will never see mortars get caught in grab when fade is available. It just it just doesn't, doesn't happen. So I would not rely on that because it'll be a bad habit that you'll need to break later, expecting mortars to not react to it. Fade is very, very easy to use. It's really, really easy for them to dodge grab. That's kind of problem number Now, who are you trying to grab here? If you're trying to grab the Torb, you're trying to grab the Torb, you're already beaming the Torb. He's a huge, fat target. You don't need grab here to, to, to beam the Torb. If you're trying to grab the back line, the, the grab should be further back to make sure that it pulls in everybody in the back line. So the aim is off, and the, I, I, the thing here is kind of off. But not only that, Coalescence is active. So Coalescence heals for, what, 150 health a second? Why am I grabbing them when, like, yeah, maybe the Moira is going to be in it, but the Moira's in it, she'll be in the backside of the grab. Everyone at the front who will be body blocking for her are going to be healed for 150 health a second. Why? You know you know what I mean? Like, why are we doing this? Like, why is our reaction to, oh, their support ultimate that does a ton of healing, why is our reaction is, hey, let's grab them and try to overwhelm the healing? Why don't I just wait five seconds for the coalescence to end and then grab them? Why is there a reason right now where I'm like, no, I need to grab, I need to grab right now? No, you don't. Just chill. Your whole team's alive. Like, you're, you're, you're half health. You have no bubbles, but you have plenty of good cover behind the card. You're good. You're totally good here. So now grab's gone off. Back to, which type of grab is this? Is this a grab that I'm going to kill them? Or is this a grab that my team is going to kill them? Well, it's obviously not a grab where you're going to kill them. You do have ammo, which is good, right? So you manage to get the reload off. Reload. And you get the grab. But it's kind of a tough angle. You kind of need to expose yourself and jump on the cart, and you're really low. So even independent of, like, let's imagine Coalescence was not active, and let's imagine there's no overhealth. I still think you die here if you try to get the kill. Between the turret and all these other heroes shooting at you, I think you die before anybody get, anybody in their team dies. So the grab's not for you. So the grab's for your team, right? Can your team actually see this grab? Not that well, right? The cart's blocking half of it, and the ball blocks the other half. And this, this is the same thing. I mean, the ball, I think, is playing well here, right? The, the body block. Is he understands his job here is to make sure that nobody can get angle on the grab. But, like, imagine that it was an Arisa or a Reinhardt here. The same thing is going to happen. They're just literally going to body block for their whole team, and no one's going to die, right? Your team does not, in fact, actually have a clean LOS of this. There's a giant cart in the way, and there's a giant ball in the way. So this is nothing. Your Baptiste, though, <laughs> the window is obviously not your fault. So all the ultimates get popped here, which is crazy, right? You pop, Kitsune gets popped, Blizzard's been popped, and Window's going to get popped here. Where is the Blizzard? Blizzard's on target, at least. Is the Blizzard a reaction? Okay. So there is a possibility here that you and the May communicated so that the May is going to pop Blizzard on the graph. In which case, I think this is more acceptable. I think this is more acceptable and could very well work. I still don't love the timing of it. I would have looked for a cleaner opportunity, but that's more understandable if you knew for sure the May was going to ulti with you. But without that, I think this is a terrible graph. But with it, I think this is okay. I give it a C. All right, Suzu goes off. Remember here is your goal should be not to die. I know you want to get the kills, but at high energy, if you live here and just get how it healed, you're still going to kill everyone. 100 enemy Zarya is a juggernaut. Unstoppable. <laughs> I, I cannot emphasize this enough, and you will start feeling this as you start understanding how to preserve your life and get bubbles back with high energy. Once you have high energy, the next fight is basically a done deal if they let you get out with high energy. It is very, very easy for you to walk all over them if they are brawly heroes like they are here. If they are playing poke heroes, like if they're Ash or Widow and like, you know, Kiriko and Zen, you're gonna have a bad time because you're never gonna get close to them. But if you can get into the next fight with high energy, two bubbles, and they have to stay close to you to be effective, that's gonna be the end of it. All you do is stay alive. Don't try to force this. Running straight at him Right here, you should be dead. 
It is crazy the storm does not kill you right now. Alright, body shot. There's overload. Body shot, body shot, body shot. If, if one of those is a headshot, you're done for, right? Misses this shot, misses that shot. He can just, he just finish the kill on you. Misses this shot by a ton. That's three missed shots and no headshots. Again, at higher ranks, you're just dead. The Torb alone literally kills you. Just right click there. It's like right click does a lot of damage. That Torb turn is no health. Just one right click and it's dead. All right, we're beaming down. So let's think about this. We're 140 health, 70 health. Got a backup. All right, understandable. We're gonna heal. You're looking around for the for the for the ball. Uh, I would note is that you pop bubble right now, even though you have no no idea if anyone is looking at you, which no one is looking at you. So I look at this. I'm like, hmm, okay. The ball is here. I'm low. I turn around and be like, hey, what's kind of going on? I want to get healed. If I feel like Makira is not healing, I go and get the mega. Right? Don't rush this. Don't run at the ball. Don't do anything crazy. You don't get like bumped in the mines or anything like that. Just stay alive. Don't and definitely don't waste the bubble right now for no reason. Okay, we're gonna push forwards. Don't worry about it. I, I like he's too far back, and there's really not a lot you can do about it at this point in time. I, the ball really should not die here. Like literally, all the balls do is roll this way. He's fine. I don't understand why he rolls into the rest of your team and dies. That's what I mean. It's like my instinct is the ball is not gonna be a fool and just suicide his life into your team unnecessarily. Literally, all he has to do is just roll this way without grapple even, and he's totally safe. But fine, all right? Ball's gonna die here. Okay. We're gonna go up, we're gonna take the choke. So this is good, I like this, right? We wanna get up there, we wanna get there fast. Um, by the way, you can use the cart and right click jump onto the top. Very, very important skill to learn. So we're gonna get up here, right? Uh, I think even from here, you can definitely right click onto here. I think you can right click onto the bridge as well. And you might think, why does this matter, right? Why am I trying to optimize a few seconds here? It actually matters a ton. So. Your team has no ultimates because your team popped all your ultimates, right? Only Soldier has Overclock coming up, but you popped four ultimates to win that fight, which is a terrible ult economy. So they're going to come back into the next fight with two ultimates, which is not so good because two is greater than one. But we really want to jam up this choke as much as possible. And analyzing this choke a little bit, I feel like this video is like two hours long. Analyzing this choke a little bit. So watch the curve of the wall and look at this, right? It's a good tracing job, buddy. This side, not so much. So where we want to hold them is right here. This is the thinnest, narrowest part of the choke, and there's no cover here. There's like a sliver over here where someone can partially cover, but generally speaking, there is no cover right here. The thing is, a common side that people hold is over here, right? Because you there's cover for you. But if you play here, I should choose different colors so you can see, right? We'll use blue for good guys. Right? So common spot to play is over here where you have cover. But if you play this spot, this is actually much stronger because you're gonna deny this little pocket right here from them, which you can also use yourself. If you get in trouble, you can drop this way down to the point and get healing from your supports. From here, obviously you're still safe, but it potentially allows them to come in and use this area. Now, why does this matter? You're gonna lose this fight because the Cassidy is gonna stand in that pocket. This is why cover is so important and such a subtle thing. The Cassidy's gonna stand right here. The rest of his team is gonna stand right here and you're gonna stand here and you're not gonna be able to kill the Cassidy because there's too much damage pressure coming down this way. So the Cassidy's gonna live here for too long you eventually kill him, but that allows the rest of the team to get a clean engage on the point. That's the problem, which is why if you get up here fast enough, right? if you get up here fast enough, you can set up here and not here. And this is better assuming they don't have the ability to um, lock you in. So for example, this is a bad idea to do against Doomfist. Again, another example of why Overwatch is a situational game, because what might otherwise be a good idea is a bad idea if they run certain heroes. Because you play up there, Doomfist can jump behind and then punch you forwards and then you're screwed. But if you play here, that's extremely unlikely to happen. Worst case scenario, you'll slide here and then you can walk out. So you want to be up right now. Great. See, and like you understand, you're like, oh, this is a little spooky, right? You don't have two bubbles. I think you're like, hey, this is a little spooky with this many heroes, which I agree with, right? But like you probably could peek here more and try to kill the kill the Cassidy. And then you're safe here. If you're like, if even if you burn through two bubbles quickly, you just drop and play right here. Don't walk back to the cart, play right here. Like even in this doorway if you want to, but like play right here because no one can walk forwards and look down and try to kill you. It's way too hard. 
to do that. Like it's too dangerous for them because remember when you were trying to do it to the turret, you get blown up and you try to stand still at the edge to try to kill somebody like that. So you can drop here, play the story if you have to. But now you get up the corner. I, actually, let's 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 actually just walk through this live, right? We'll, we'll we'll play it through live so you can see how it goes. So you can see we're at the choke lane, right? The Cassie's in the pocket I talked about. If you're here, Cassie has to play down there. Cassie can't push through. Even double support, if you have high energy two bubbles, she can't push through. No way. Overclock gets popped. Your soldier's trying to use it, obviously. You're too far back right now. You should. There's no reason you should be backing away from the choke. Play here. Like, you don't realize how scary you are. You, at minimum, should not be backing away from here, right? That's the regular safe spot. You need to be playing up there, and it helps take pressure on your soldier. Soldier gets lit up. Bubble is forced. Right? You're still trying to be like Cassie. Again, he keeps surviving because he's in the pocket. Right? Now you go down, but you see what's happened to your back line. It's now a three on three. Despite the fact that you had to force their team, four members of their team, to a tiny choke, they have a clean three on three right now. And the Cassie's down here and might do some damage too before he dies. Right? Now Visor gets popped because, again, the soldier had space. Remember, the soldier was here. He was right here. If you've been right here burning him down in his team, he's not able to get disengaged. Right? He does the long rotation. No one's able to no one's able to notice or lock it off because they're busy getting engaged on by the ball. Otherwise, for sure, if there's no ball here, they'd be like, what's the soldier doing? And they kill him when he walks through the doorway. Soldier flanks. Now Bice gets popped, and you've now lost control of this fight. Everything after this is just luck. You're just rolling the dice. Okay? And rolling the dice is a bad way to win games. You want to win games by being smarter than the opposing team. Ideally, also mechanically better, but you can always guarantee that, right? But you can play smarter than them. You always have the ability to play smarter than them. But you're not, right? This is too much passivity, allowing the enemy team to do what they want. And again, everything after this is just, it's just luck, right? It's just, it's just a straight up brawl fest. Who knows what's gonna happen, right? You just kind of do the best you can, right? You're trying to beam people down. So you get some kills here, right? You get him, you trade for him, you're high energy. And then you're done. And that's it. And that's the game. I think your team actually contests for a while, but I don't think you have a real contest here. Yeah, once Coalescence gets popped, it's, it, this is what I mean by high ground, right? Like, if you, don't, if you don't take the high ground, they set on the high ground, and then you never have the ability to kill them ever again. But, like, even right here, like, you kill the soldier right away, but, like, with two people on high ground, they can kill anybody they want at any time, and you never have the ability. Whenever you get the Cassie low, he just walks away from the edge. Very, very hard to win that fight. So, small tip here. It, it really doesn't matter. I don't think it's going to change this fight whatsoever. But in this situation, where you have multiple heroes stealing the well, one on the left and one on the right side of the card, don't play here. Because when you play here, the high ground and the, high ground and the person on the left can shoot you. But you're going to see you're going to get focused down like right now in a second. Right? If you play the inside corner, it's much harder for them to get a shot on you. And they're eventually going to get frustrated trying to aim straight down. And often they will drop like that. And that's the moment where you can get a kill. Again, it's not going to change this fight whatsoever. I'm just noting to think sometimes it's actually safer to play closer to them when they're on a cliff. Because it's really hard for most players to aim straight down and aim like this. It's like a very awkward angle to try to hit somebody. Here, easy, right? Everyone's used to taking shots here. Here, really hard. Especially when you can walk in the doorway and completely go under their aim where they can't, literally can't hit you anymore. Reminder, especially for when you grab multiple targets, A, you should be right-clicking a lot more when you grab multiple targets. But um, always finish your ammo with a, with a right-click. It's absolutely massive. Like, for perspective, Think about how much damage this is going to do right now, right? If you right-click right now, it's going to hit four heroes for 90 damage. That's going to be 360 damage for this right-click. It's not actually going to be that, because I think it's, it's, only, it's only going to be 90 in the primary target, and it's going to splash the other ones. It's still a ton of damage, right? It is, it is definitely 200-plus damage that you would do from one measly little right-click right now, which would give you a better chance of being able to kill them. Again, would not have mattered. They're way ahead in the resource race. Right? Your Tracer basically has to hit like a three-man pulse here for this to have any chance. Uh, more competitive than I expected, actually. But, yeah, I mean, you move left card here, which is understandable, because you're trying to kill the Kirigo, but I think you went too far here. It, 
One thing is, I also noticed you don't use the cart, it's geometry itself. If I want to kill a Kiriko, I don't go this way. I just jump on the cart, and then she has nowhere to hide. Even if she goes here, I just go to the left side of the cart, right? I go to the left side of the cart, and I beam her down. So you see how you, you go really far away from the cart? All the way over here? Actually, I think you guys win this. Eh, it's, it's three and four, but the Kiriko's about to die, and the Cassidy's low. I think you guys might win this, actually, if you don't leave the cart. Yeah, I, I would say it's at least a 50-50 chance. It, it's much more competitive than I expected, actually. I, forgot, I didn't realize it was this competitive when I first saw it. I think if you just stay on card here, then there's a chance. Obviously, you're close to the Cassidy, so he, he does more damage to you. But, I mean, you've got to be on the card, right? Like, that's that's the tank's job. As a Brawl tank, you basically have to stay on the card. No one ever expects the Brawl tank to leave the card. At, in overtime, obviously. Okay, we're going to hold there. I'm not even going to summarize, because this video is already super, super long, but I think you get the picture. Um, bubbles aggression, ultimates, etc. All right, I'm gonna hold there. Hopefully it's helpful.